So we know from epidemiology that the pattern of who's connected to whom, the sort of social network in a society, can affect the diffusion of diseases across the society. Um, and we have two canonical ways of thinking about uh, how social networks are structured. One is sort of a residential network. So people are sort of embedded in neighborhoods, the neighborhoods are overlapping. So you think if you want to get from one neighborhood to another neighborhood far away, you have to go through all the intervening neighborhoods to get there, so disease spreads sort of slowly. By contrast, you can think of the casual contact networks so people know, know each other sort of at random. And then a disease can spread very quickly across different parts of the social space and infect a population. The sort of rule of contagion is that if one of your neighbors gets it, then you also get infected and it spreads from neighbor to neighbor. You can see down the left-hand side when it spreads through the residential network, it spreads around the structure of the population and ultimately uh, saturates. Now, by contrast, when it spreads to the casual contact network, it spreads throughout the population very quickly and saturates in, in uh, much faster time. So this has implications for how we would design health policy um, if we think that we can use those same casual contact networks that spread disease quickly for also spreading um, desirable behaviors like getting vaccinations or maybe uh, preventative screenings. So to test this, um, we designed an experiment where we could study the spread of health behavior through networks and design these uh, online communities. Um, we've embedded people in social networks. You can see here the left-hand side um, has a kind of residential structured network, and the right-hand side has a casual contact network. Uh, and then we seeded them with behaviors and watched them spread. I'm going to watch these spread simultaneously, and what you see is that in the residential networks, people are adopting um, in these neighborhoods, and then the, there's a spillover effect, where the behavior spreads to the next neighborhood, the next neighborhood, and so forth. In the, in the casual contact network, you can see it sort of spreads all over the network, but it spreads more slowly, and in fact, at the end of this process, you get many more adopters in the residential network than the casual contact network. Uh, now this is, this is striking and really surprising. So what it means is that behavior spread really differently than disease does. So the intuitions from epidemiology about uh, diffusion dynamics don't generalize. But of course, for practical applications, what this means is when you design a health policy intervention, um, for example, you want to get people in southern Africa to use uh, condoms, you can't target the same rapid diffusion network that allow disease like AIDS to spread very quickly. In fact, you target different kinds of networks entirely, sort of um, closely structured residential networks. And it also means more generally for the design of online communities where you want to promote um, desirable health behaviors, uh, that you would structure those communities more like residential networks than like casual contact networks um, to promote uh, sort of overall well-being and health.